Welcome to the Portland Pentecostals podcast. We're happy you've decided to join us as we build a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Enjoy the message. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the miracle working power of the God that we serve. Hallelujah. I'm going to take our attention today to the book of Hebrews chapter number two. I'll read a short passage of scripture in Hebrews chapter two, verse 14. Speaking of Jesus and the relationship between Jesus and humanity, it says, inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, He, talking about Jesus, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Jesus, I'm thankful for the power of your spirit in this place, for the power of your word, God, uh, that is not, oh Lord, short reaching, but is far reaching, Lord. Uh, And we're asking today that uh, we would see through the eyes of eternity the power of your cross. Uh, We love you, Jesus. Uh, We exalt your name today, Lord. Uh, We worship you with all our heart, God, uh, and we expect uh, you to continue what you've begun in us in Jesus name hallelujah would you clap your hands one time in worship to Jesus hallelujah hallelujah you're worthy Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus for your goodness thank you for standing in honor to the word of God you can be seated this scripture um uh, it kind of summarizes the whole, the whole glorious story uh, in very quick uh, manner, just in two verses of the of the of the transition or the the whole journey from failure and fear and death to victory that Jesus brought through the cross. And I'm so thankful for that today. We know it to be true. Whether we understand it through the word of God or not, we know it's true that as humanity, death is knocking at the door of every human being. That the, that our life is lived with, not, with death knocking at the door. The scripture that we read here talks about the experience of humanity that all of their life as humanity uh, there's a fear of death uh, that is uh, ruling over humanity and bringing bondage uh, into humanity's life Uh, and today if you've been born again if you've experienced the work of God uh, then uh, sometimes you might feel a little conflict in that because uh, you don't feel that all the time and I'm so thankful for that but at times uh, there's that that hook uh, of, uh, of humanity's uh, uh, reasoning and the reality of some of the situations we face that tries to drag us back into this concept and perception of life uh, that all we have to look forward to is the shoe to drop and death to come our way. Genesis chapter number 2 verses 15 through 17 uh, just brings uh, that biblical context uh, to the reality that sin brought. Uh, When God was speaking to Adam in the garden, he said uh, in verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Uh, And the Lord commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God gave the promise in the scripture. He gave the promise to Adam that if you don't stay in alignment with my design and you choose to eat of that tree, that you choose to partake of the indulgence of your own 
desires that in that day you shall surely die. And ever since that day, Adam woke up every day wondering if it was a day that he was going to die. We know that scripturally, reality is, is that the spirit died in that very moment. That the purity of relationship between God and man was broken in that moment of sin. But the death of the body began that day. And I believe that Adam lived his life expecting that any day could be his last day. He taught his children that fear. In fact, it's not even taught to us, uh, the fear of death. It just uh, is natural to us uh, that as soon as we realize uh, that there is death, uh, there's, a, there's a, a fear of death that comes into each and every you know, one of humanity. Uh, is that, uh, that fear that today could be the last day. Uh, and that's uh, the, 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 the shadow uh, that's over uh, every human being that's outside uh, of Jesus Christ uh, but uh, but uh, today I know we're the first Sunday uh, of the new year and we're to be optimistic uh, and we should be to a degree uh, but the truth is is that uh, most people tongue in cheek uh, when they give a new year's resolution uh, are already talking about giving up on that new year's resolution they're already talking about the demise of it. They're, they're almost speaking jokingly. They might be excited for a while, but they, there's this fear of failure. There's this, there's this, uh, this uh, expectation that, uh, that good things can't really come to pass. They can't come to the, the fullness of, uh, 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 of reality in our lives. Uh, and, and so uh, today I'm here uh, to encourage you and I today. I'm to remind you and I uh, of the purpose uh, of Jesus coming to the earth and the, and the glory of the cross uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, I know that it, it's uh, the, the central subject uh, of, uh, of Christianity, uh, but we ought not ever uh, apologize for that uh, or be afraid to talk about uh, Jesus and the cross uh, because the truth is, uh, is that when Jesus came uh, and bled in died on the cross and resurrected the third day he came to destroy death and hell from your life and my life I'm so thankful that when Jesus even appeared to John in Revelations when John had the privilege of seeing Jesus in his glorified state in Revelations 1 and verse number 17 when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead but he laid his right hand on me saying do not be afraid I am the first the last I am he who lives and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and I have the keys of Hades and death Jesus put his hand on his apostle on his shoulder and he said don't be afraid you're looking at me I don't know I, I think for the most part uh, John was afraid because he saw God in his glory and it just was overwhelming uh, but it doesn't matter today uh, whether you're seeing God in his glory uh, and seeing your frailty uh, or perhaps uh, you're looking at the condition uh, of the world around you the truth is uh, when John was on that island uh, it was a time uh, when there was great turmoil uh, and persecution and darkness and death uh, was knocking at the door of even the Christians every day. Uh, physical death uh, was a reality that they were faced with. Uh, but Jesus put his hand uh, on John and said, don't be afraid uh, because I'm the one that was alive uh, and I died uh, and I rose again uh, and I have the keys uh, to death uh, and the grave.
grave. We have a God that he went to the Calvary and he died the death that you and I are owed to God. And yet he came out the other side with resurrection power. I know this is cliche and that's what I I'm not here to beat people up but there is a concern in my heart that sometimes we've heard the story of the cross so much that now it doesn't have any strength to our perspective. It doesn't affect our perspective on life but I'm here to remind you today that Jesus did go to the grave and die and he did by his own power raise on the third day with power over death so that you and I do not have to fear death. You don't have to fear corruption when sin came to the world. Yes, it brought death, but it brought with it also corruption. Corruption really leads to death. But so uh, all of the unraveling that happens, uh, whether it's your physical body, you know, uh, I've seen all the, you know, for some reason it seems like uh, uh, everybody uh, is trying to, everybody's laughing about, you know, getting old. And that's probably the best way to look at it so that you don't get depressed. (laughs) But... You know, they got the, I've heard, seen like people saying, yeah, I went to the doctor and after I'm 40, the doctor doesn't even try to fix you anymore. He just says, yeah, that happens when you get old, you know, <laughs> yeah, your ankle's just wearing out. You mean I injured it? No, you didn't injure it. It's just wearing out. It's just getting old, you know, and because corruption is that unraveling and deteriorating, uh, yes, of our bodies. Uh, I want to emphasize that our bodies today, uh, but also of relationships uh, outside of the touch of of the cross. Uh, Relationships unravel. Uh, Jobs become mundane and boring, uh, and uh, I know they do even in Jesus to a degree but God wants to transition the effect of the corruption on our perception of life and that's what Jesus really came to do he came to bring about uh, a freedom uh, uh, from corruption uh, and from death uh, and I'm so thankful for that uh, listen to this this is uh, we've got to understand uh, the power of the cross uh, of Jesus Christ uh, everything that unravels uh, everything that breaks uh, everything that gets sick uh, everything that dies uh, when Jesus Christ uh, went to the cross uh, he went to the cross uh, so that under Underneath of his cross uh, could come the victory, uh, the reversing of the effect of sin, uh, a reviving, uh, a resurrection, uh, a hope where there was death. Uh, That's what Jesus came to do. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 53. uh, I wish I could read the whole chapter to you today. uh, But verses 5 and 6, listen to what the cross did. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What a wonderful, beautiful picture that Jesus when he went to that cross yes he went to the cross with you and I in mind and he was wounded when they pierced his side when they when they took the cat of nine tails and put it around his back what was it for it was for our sin and for our healing for the healing of your body for the healing of your mind that's the chastisement of our peace was upon him what's he talking about there He's talking about uh, bringing, uh, uh, we sing the song uh, about mental health being restored. Uh, That was a short list uh, of what Jesus came to do. Uh, That wasn't the 
long list. That was his short list. But what did Jesus cross come to do? It came to provide peace of mind into your heart and into your spirit that you are not headed for destruction when you identify with the cross. That it's not the end of the story. And that even if your story has been riddled with failures and frustrations and pain, that that is not the future. That might be part of your path, but that is not your destination because the cross came to bring healing. The cross came to bring salvation from your sin and my sin that my sin could be taken away on the cross. Jesus came to draw men to him by the cross. John 12, 32 and 33. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. <coughs> and he said, as he said, signifying what death he would die. Jesus was the only one. God was the only one that could solve the sin issue and solve the death issue in your life and my life. The sickness in your body. Jesus came to identify that situation. and to, uh, He came to, uh, to deal with the situation of your sickness in your body. I'm so thankful for that. Don't forget the power of the cross. Sometimes we forget it or we don't put our faith in the power of the cross. We don't we don't apply the cross to our lives because somehow we've relegated the cross to a certain area of our life. Maybe today you have you have not been born again. You have not allowed God to touch the sin issue in your life. I'm here to tell you the cross is here to heal your sin to cover your sin to make you clean not because you're clean in yourself not because you are able to clean up your life but he looks at the dirty messy ugly parts of your life that you would like to put in the closet and he sees them for what they are and he says I went to the cross to pay the penalty for that sin and I went to the cross that I could purify you from that sin. I'm here to tell you the power of Jesus is enough to identify your sin and to pay the payment for your sin. But it's greater than that that when the work of Calvary is allowed to continue in your life, he can remove the sin. He he can take away the heart of sin. He can take away the desire for that sin. I'm here hoping that faith would come alive in you and I again. And we would understand the grace of God and his cross. That it is not superficial to whitewash in a way that ignores. But it's a power to identify your sin. To forgive your sin. To take away your sin. To make you new in him. I'm so thankful for the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's enough. It's enough. When God poured out the Holy Ghost on his church in the book of Acts chapter number 2. We go there very often because we know that in that new birth that happened in the church comes the activation of all that Jesus did on the cross. And as Peter was preaching about the outpouring of the Spirit, and he quoted the prophet of old about the promise of the outpouring. In verse number 21 of chapter 2, he, he finishes it up by saying, he's now quoting still from the Old Testament, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, he says, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested 
tested by God uh, to do my, uh, uh, to you by miracles, wonders, and signs uh, which God did through him in your midst. Uh, as you yourselves know, uh, him being delivered uh, by the determined purpose uh, and foreknowledge of God, uh, you have taken and by lawless hands uh, have crucified and put to death uh, whom God raised up, uh, having loosed uh, the pains of death uh, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. <coughs> the good news is that Jesus was God predetermined before the foundation of the world, before sin ever was entered into humanity's heart. He said, I'm going to come and I'm going to bleed and die. I'm going to put myself at the, at the, into the hands of sinners and let them do what they think is best. Well, not knowing that as they put me to death, in their anger and in their hatred and in their resistance it will allow me to come underneath the power of death, wrestle with death and come out the other side with the power over death because, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> because nothing can hold the power of God Almighty and death could never overcome our God and so because of it we can call on the name of the Lord and find salvation we can call on the name of the Lord in baptism when we have someone baptized in second service today we're going to call the name of Jesus they're going to call on the name of Jesus and in that comes salvation you see the power of God is activated through our faith in the cross it's not in your your weighing it is um, excuse, let me slow this down you, you know, it's not in what you think uh, your sin is and you think that your sin is little enough that God can forgive it. <laughs> or you weigh it and you say it's too big. And so you don't allow the cross. That, that, that's the, the improper way of looking at it. And that's, uh, I guess, really when you boil it down, that's what I'm trying to address today. Is do we understand and embrace the unequivocal power of the cross of Jesus Christ? Is there things in your life? Is there failures in your life? Is there a sickness in your body? Is there a dysfunction in your family that you put on the scale and you put the cross on the other and you feel that that situation in your life is of greater weight than the cross? I'm here to challenge you today that the only thing between between you and your deliverance, between you and forgiveness, between you and healing in your body is whether you see the cross for who it is or what it is, that you understand that the cross of Jesus Christ was measured out in advance by God and it was considered sufficient for every sin. It was considered sufficient for for every sickness it was considered sufficient for every weakness of mind every depression every failure that you have God took he did not look for the worst sin in the world and say my cross is bigger than that he took the worst to the smallest of every individual put them all together and dropped them on the scale and then he stepped onto the other side with his blood and the, the scales tipped and the, the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus was 
was greater than every sickness of every individual and every sin of every individual piled up in one lump of ugliness. And I'm here to tell you the cross is greater than every failure combined of every sickness combined. We have a God whose cross is greater his cross is greater I'm so thankful for the cross <laughs> of Jesus Christ John chapter number 3 verses 13 through 17 very well known passage that I want to read today Jesus speaking says no one No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read it, but if you were to go to the book of Numbers chapter 21 in the Old Testament, you'll find that the people of Israel they rebelled against God's plan. God had brought them out of Egypt by his mighty hand through the Red Sea. He'd been providing for them food to eat in the morning as manna came up every day. He was providing water from a rock for them to drink, and that rock was Christ. And they're participating in the, the unfolding of the greatest deliverance of humanity to that point. But they rebelled, and they pushed against God's plan and because of it God's judgment began to fall and he allowed serpents to come up from the earth and they were biting the people and as the people were being bitten by these poisonous snakes they were writhing in pain and collapsing and dying there helplessly in the middle of the wilderness for what they had put on themselves by pushing against God rebelling against God this was not ignorance this was willful rebellion and because of it there was judgment coming and those snakes were coming and they would bite those people and they would die and they cried out to Moses go to God we need his forgiveness we need his deliverance and as Moses went before God's presence God instructed him and he, he built a, a staff with a, a serpent on it that was bronze that's what Jesus was talking about in the passage we just read and, and he lifted up that staff and God told Moses if anybody in the camp if they'll just look to that staff if they'll just lift their eyes up and see that staff they'll be healed and, and I can just imagine the silliness of that to think that, that, that you just look at this stick with with a, with a serpent on it and all of a sudden everything's uh, going to be okay. okay uh, couldn't you imagine uh, the fear of seeing a snake come to you and you're helpless uh, trying to run uh, and it strikes uh, and it bites you on the heel and you feel the pain uh, and you start feeling the activation of that poison inside of your body uh, and everything in your situation is saying uh, it's the end uh, I have no hope uh, and yet uh, Moses is saying if you just look to that serpent and put your eyes on it. You'll be healed. But but my, my kids, they, they, they're in rebellion. Just look to that staff. But, but, but I got pain in my body. Just look to that staff. But I messed up and I deserve this. Just look to that staff. And the Bible says that anybody that would just look to that staff, they would be healed. And Jesus 
Jesus was letting us know when he spoke in this scripture in John 3. He's saying it's ridiculous by man's minds and estimation. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what you're facing, no matter the corruption in your life, no matter the deteriorating of your relationships, if you look to the cross, if you look to Jesus, if you believe that his cross is enough, he will begin the work in your life. I'm here to encourage you today, but my but my body is in pain. Look to the cross. The cross is enough, but I made a mess of my own life and I deserve it. Just look to the cross because Jesus is enough, but, but it doesn't look like it can be put back together. Just look to the cross because I'm here to tell you that Jesus is enough and the cross is enough. I am thankful for the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Just look to the cross. If you stand in this place today, I'm so thankful for the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm here to encourage you today. Yes, there might be somebody here that you're not sure of your salvation. Well, I'm emphasizing today that Jesus' cross is sufficient for your sin and my sin. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes we get on our way in Jesus and we forget the power of the cross. We relegate the cross to what it did for us in initial salvation and I am absolutely grateful for it and that's the foundation of where it all begins but I'm here to tell you today that the cross of Jesus is if it's enough to save your soul then it's enough to heal your body today it's enough to heal your family today I'm not saying that I know how the road's going to unfold for it to happen. That's the problem sometimes is we got we feel like we got to know the whole pathway and who's got to say what and who's going to have to uh, concede in this area and that area. And so we take all of that. And by the time we start thinking that through, we've made this, uh, this uh, situation that is struggle and is important, but we've made it so bad big that we look at that and we look at the cross as some small insignificant side note to our life and we forget that the cross of Jesus Christ was big enough for your failures that the cross of Jesus Christ is enough to begin a work in your life that has no end the cross of Jesus Christ is enough to cover it all. Every sickness cannot, no, there's not one sickness I feel it in my spirit today. I'm here to tell you, if you've been settling for a sickness or a disease in your body, I'm not here to, to accuse people. I'm not here to shame you at all. But if you've been saying it's too unimportant for me to talk to God about, or it's too big for God, or how, I don't care how you've, how you've somehow cornered it in your brain, to be uh, uh, irrelevant to the cross uh, and uh, 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 unavailable to the the grace uh, of the cross. I'm here to tell you today that if we can look to the cross uh, and we can see the cross uh, for what it really is, uh, it doesn't matter how big uh, or how small uh, what you got in your life is. uh, The cross uh, is greater. uh, The cross uh, is greater. uh, It's enough for your sin. It's enough for your sickness. It's enough for your frustration. It's enough for your your depression. I'm here to tell you there's a pathway that Jesus wants to put you on. (laughs) 
of restoration of all things and it begins at the cross but it's not just beginning at the cross the cross becomes what speaks over your life over and over and over again and no longer am I that man that looks or waits in expectation for death like we opened with at the beginning today that mankind is always waiting for the shoe to drop always waiting for the next bad disaster in your life to come but you can have a hope that there is something greater and you can echo with the writer of 1 Corinthians Paul when he said in chapter 15 verses 50 through 58 when he said now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does corruption inherit in corruption behold though I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised how incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is your sting oh Hades where is your victory the sting of death is sin the strength of sin is a law but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord that is my blessed hope. And so I'm here to open this place up as a place of expectation today. I know if you've got to repent of some things, then you can come and fall on your face. But when you're done falling on your face, I want to encourage you that you can lift up your head and expect. I'm not waiting anymore for destruction because the cross is greater. The cross has the final say in my life. The cross is greater. Oh, but I'm fearful. Look to Jesus in the cross. Oh, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Look to Jesus in the cross. My sickness seems to be getting greater. Look to the cross because he was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquity. He his chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed.